Hi guys, welcome to the next aviation video and the first video on jet engine. So this video is mainly about the introduction part of uh, jet engine. So whoever I will be appearing for the jet uh, engine exam, I will be do doing a continuous video on jet engine. So this is just the starting part and I will end up doing the entire series of videos on jet engine. So that will be part of this entire aviation series that I am doing. Uh, so let's start off with the basic things the fundamentals of jet engine what are the basic things you are required to know well first of all where the engine could be installed the engine could be installed either at the front or at the rear if the engine is installed at the front in that case the engine is going to push the aircraft and if the engine is installed at the rear side in that case it is going to pull the aircraft so depending on whether the engine is at the front or at the rear depending on whether it is pushing or pulling so the engine can be categorized as pusher type or puller type. so what exactly it is doing it is either pushing or pulling and what exactly is pushing or pulling is a force so jet engine basically if I am studying jet engine that implies I need to study about force okay so what is the SI unit of force it is Newton okay so if you are dealing with force that means force as we know is product of mass into acceleration Newton's second law that means we need to know a bit about mass and we need to know a bit about acceleration so mass is a scalar quantity and acceleration is rate of change of velocity and velocity is a vector quantity now depending on whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing the acceleration could be positive or negative Because there is a force which is pulling the aircraft, the force of the engine which is pulling the aircraft, and because it is pulling the aircraft, so it is doing some work, so we need to know what is work. So work is force into distance. Because some work is done with respect to certain amount of time, so work done per unit time is power. So you need to know what is power. So power is work done by time taken. What is the SI unit of power? It is what? Or horsepower and one horsepower is equal to 746 watt now what is the capacity of doing work so that is energy so we also need to know a bit about energy what are the basic form of energy we need to consider we are getting energy because the air is being drawn in so it is the pressure energy the air is getting pressurized so we need to know about pressure energy after the air is being pressurized and it is being brought to the combustion chamber the fuel is drawn into the combustion chamber and the fuel and air mixes up and then there will be combustion so if there is combustion so that is heat energy and the convert and if I am converting this into another form of energy so which is the kinetic energy and which exactly is the change in the kinetic energy is exactly what is driving the aircraft forward okay so change in the kinetic energy implies kinetic energy in the final minus the kinetic energy in the initial so what is propelling the or pushing or pulling the aircraft it is the force force is mass into acceleration so mass into acceleration in place of acceleration I can write well change in velocity by time taken so m dv dt if I'm assuming this dt to be 1 so we can write well this force or the thrust specifically we can say also is equal to the product of mass into the change in velocity so what is the change in velocity so it is equal to the final velocity minus initial velocity so we can say well thrust is equal to mass into final velocity minus mass into initial velocity with mass being common so we can say well thrust or the force is equal to mass into v final minus v initial now when this value could be maximum because thrust now we have just discovered is equal to mass into vf minus vi so this could be maximum only if vi is zero correct 
so vi is zero implies the velocity initial velocity is zero so when the initial velocity is zero the initial velocity will be zero if the aircraft is stationary on the ground so we can get maximum thrust with the aircraft stationary on the ground and this value of thrust is called the static thrust so an aircraft can produce maximum value of thrust if it is stationary okay and what is thrust now what we have seen the thrust is the product of mass into v final minus v initial divided by the time dt and we are taking this dt to be one so we can assume from now on that thrust is equal to m v final minus v initial or m v2 minus v1 where v2 being the final velocity and v1 being the initial velocity okay now <coughs> in certain type of aircraft the thrust we can also get because of some pressure which is acting on some area so in that case this equation will be modified and we can say well thrust is equal to pressure into area because we know force is equal to pressure into area plus mass into v final minus v initial okay whenever we think about jet engine we have got basically four type of engines if i no in broad way if i if i divide one is turbo jet then turbo fan turbo prop and turbo shaft turbo prop means a jet engine fitted with a propeller turbo shaft means the type of engine which is fitted onto the helicopter with a shaft in it turbo jet and turbo fan how to differentiate the one which will have in the intake very big blade a fan like structure that will be turbo fan and the one without the fan which will be somewhat more sleeker will be turbo jet now if you try to see and if you try to compare the turbo fan with the turbo prop the turbo prop definitely can handle more air than a turbo jet so that means in case of turbo prop it is accelerating because at the end of the day what we are getting is the force which is equal to the product of mass into acceleration what is the mass it is the mass of the air and acceleration is this change in the velocity of this mass of air because in case of the propeller driven aircraft with the propeller diameter being very big so it is taking up a large amount of mass of air so the acceleration in this case is low whereas in case of a normal jet engine turbo jet with the diameter being smaller it is holding or taking up less mass of air and the acceleration is more so you need to know this basic difference okay next we <coughs> try to uh, look into the condition that when the thrust would be maximum so apart from whatever we have discussed that the thrust would be maximum if the aircraft is stationary on the ground apart from that what else could be the condition for the thrust to be maximum how the thrust could be maximum because the thrust could be maximum only if the change in velocity is maximum and change in velocity will be maximum only when the change in pressure is maximum because only it is the change in pressure which finally is, it is getting converted into velocity so in other words we can say for us to have maximum thrust the kinetic energy should be high and for the kinetic energy to be high the potential energy should be high as well or the pressure energy should be high as well so we need to increase the pressure and that is the sole uh, you know the most important criteria of the jet engine we need to increase the pressure of the air okay and next we need to remember that this works on a type of cycle which is a constant pressure cycle 
why we call jet engine as a constant pressure cycle because during the entire combustion process the pressure remain constant even though it is not exactly constant but to some extent we can say it is more or less constant so that is why it is called a constant pressure cycle another name for it is Brayton cycle this is the working principle of jet engine constant pressure cycle or Brayton cycle okay <clears throat> next is what could be the uh, or how if you try to look at the basic construction of the jet engine as you are taking this uh, or looking at this video so probably you have some idea and uh, regarding the basic jet engine construction so initially we have got the fan or the propeller whatever it is or the compressor so anything which is you know the, the pressure generating source and after that we have the combustion chamber after the combustion chamber we have got the turbine section and then we have got the exhaust section where we'll have the nose propelling nozzle we'll have uh, the tail cone and uh, so all these are part of the tail pipe so all these are part of the exhaust section so basically we have got the intake inlet section where we'll have the compressor then we have got uh, the combustion chamber and then we have got the turbine and then we have got the exhaust these four basic parts so we'll try to look at the condition when the compressor would be maximum or the sorry not uh, will be maximum efficient so when can the compressor be maximum efficient so what is the purpose of the compressor the purpose of the compressor is to increase the pressure and the increase in pressure must happen with minimum temperature the temperature should not increase why so because if the temperature is increased at the combustion section we further need to increase the temperature to burn it up so if the temperature is already increased and to increase it further we would require more fuel and that is why it is not a very viable option next is when the turbine would be maximum efficient so the purpose of the turbine is it extracts all the energy from the combustion and then it rotates or turns the uh, compressor. So, the uh, efficiency would be maximum if it can extract maximum energy of the combustion and the fuel consumption should be minimum. Now, we'll try to look at how the pressure and velocity changes at different sections, the four basic sections. So, what would happen in the compressor? So, in the compressor, the pressure would increase and the velocity would remain constant in the combustion chamber the pressure would remain constant and the velocity would increase why i need to increase the velocity because i need this increased velocity to act on the turbine to cause the turbine to rotate what will be the function of the propelling nozzle to increase the velocity because at the end of the day what i want is the thrust as we have seen is equal to m v final minus v initial so the thrust would be maximum only when v final is maximum so i need very large increase in the velocity and that is why in the propeller uh, sorry propelling nozzle we will have very large increase in the velocity now how do we achieve these changes we achieve these changes by using different ducts now whenever we are constructing these ducts what are the things we need to keep in mind regarding the flow the flow must be smooth why if the flow is not smooth it will cause turbulence and it will cause eddies what that would affect the turbulence and the eddies because turbulence is moving the air moving like this so whenever the air is moving like this and striking this uh, the path in its course will create vibration and that would lead to loss of efficiency so we do not want that next is I am just looking at the different points I mentioned what I need to discuss what would happen in the diffuser section so at every point of time what I want is the flow must be smooth 
and that includes the uh, the, the diffuser as well so along the diffuser we want the flow to be smooth diffuser means it is getting divergent so the angle of divergence is very important and this is the principle of the jet engine the subsonic diffusion now I can change this uh, area either to be divergent which in this case we will call as diffuser or convergent assuming the flow to be subsonic so if it is a divergent passage in that case the velocity would be reduced and the pressure would increase and pressure and temperature are directly proportional so if the pressure increases the temperature would also increase then we have got the convergent so in convergent the velocity would increase and the pressure would decrease and the temperature would decrease next we'll try to look at a situation called choked nozzle assume the uh, tailpipe exhaust section and because we know at the exhaust section the purpose of the exhaust section is apart from exiting all the combustion product out apart from that its purpose is also to increase the velocity so to increase the velocity it needs to be convergent so the velocity of the exhaust air which is passing through this exhaust pipe which is convergent in shape keeps on increasing and in doing so the velocity might get increased to the supersonic level and if that happens it would build up the supersonic wave if it builds up the supersonic wave this wave would create a drag and because of the drag the incoming air or exhaust air specifically will fill this resistance and because of which its velocity will be reduced now if the velocity is reduced that implies that the pressure will be increased so this additional increase in pressure when acting over this specific area will give rise to a force so now in this case what we are getting is the normal force which is equal to the mass of air v final minus v initial plus apart from this we are getting an additional force because of the increase in pressure that happened because of the formation of the shock wave so that increase in pressure acting over the specific uh, increase in pressure acting over the specific area give rise to an additional pressure uh, force which is pressure the increase in pressure into the area now to take additional advantage because now we, all, what we have seen is with this particular condition the choked condition because the thing gets in choked with this choked condition we are getting an additional thrust which is equal to the product of the pressure acting over that area so apart from that in order to take additional advantage of this fact what else can be done because the flow is already in the supersonic so if somehow I can uh, increase the speed further in that case the thrust would further be increased so how can I increase the velocity of the flow so for me to increase the velocity of the flow or of the flow if I make it divergent now because now the flow is supersonic so if I make it divergent in that case the velocity would be increased so I can get additional increase in the velocity so that means with this particular configuration with a normal exhaust which is uh, convergent and then a further divergent I can have an additional thrust additional increase in velocity okay now we'll try to look at the different type of engine a normal engine configuration can be categorized into two types one is a reaction engine and other is power engine power engine means majority of the thrust we are getting because we have got some sec some fan or propeller or certain things which is driving and providing the thrust 
So maximum energy of the combustion is used by the turbine, which in turn is being used to drive the propeller or the fan. So these are power engine. So basically turboprop and turboshaft are power engine. Reaction type, majority of the thrust we are getting because of the reaction force. That means minimum energy is being used by the turbine to drive the compressor. So turbojet and turbofan are reaction type engine. So now what are the difference, advantage and disadvantage of reaction and uh, well, power engine? We will try to look into that. So let's start off with the reaction type. If we look into the reaction engine, initially turbojet because that is the most primitive one among all the jet engine. So it is noisy and it is not fuel efficient and it is best suited for high speed and high altitude flight. And regarding, regarding the turbofan, it can further be uh, differentiated into low bypass, medium bypass and high bypass. Now this bypass refers to the amount of air which is going inside the core and the air which is going uh, outside along the periphery. So the air which is going outside along the periphery of the core, outside of the core, are used for cooling purpose. So depending on how much air is going along the periphery, the engine can be categorized as low, medium and high. If 2 is to 1, 2 times outside air, 1 time along the core, so that is low bypass. 2 to 4 is medium and more than 4 is high bypass engine. So these are def more efficient in the sense that it is not uh, noisy, it is fuel efficient and uh, regarding uh, the, the uh, high bypass engine specifically, it has got a large fan because I need to bypass large amount of air so the fan need to be larger and it is quieter in operation but then it suffer from two problems because the diameter of the fan blade is large so it can always have or always attain supersonic speed so then there will be problem with the compressibility and apart from that there will be additional drag okay now what about the uh, turbo uh, power engine turbo prop and turbo shaft so turbo shaft as we as i told you that it is uh, attached to the uh, helicopter and the turbo prop are the propeller driven aircraft Turbo prop is almost similar to the turbo fan in the case in the sense that it is also a high bypass. Turbo shaft is smaller than turbo prop, and uh, the main advantage is they both run at constant speed, and which is the optimum speed, and that is why the efficiency is high, and that is why the engine life is high as well. So these are the advantage of power driven, uh, the, the turbo prop or the turbo shaft or in other words in general power engine. Hopefully you understand. So this is the first part, the introduction part or the fundamentals of the gas turbine engine. In the next uh, video we will look into the construction part. Initially we will start off with the intake. So the next video will, will be about the intake. Thank you. Bye bye.